Hi, everyone, and welcome to a brand new episode of Business Modeling Mondays. This is a new video series presented by Quantrix. We're a financial modeling software company, and if you want to learn more about us, you can visit us at Quantrix.com. Today's episode, episode number two, is how to design models anyone can understand. We're excited to get started, so let's jump right in. Joining me again today is my co-host, Lindsay. So thank you again for being here. And today we're gonna to be talking about design. So why is it important? Yeah, even if you're an expert modeler, it can be very difficult to take over someone else's model and immediately understand all of its inner workings and how it flows. And this is especially true with spreadsheets where the same model concept could be built and organized in a pretty much infinite number of ways. As an example, have you ever gone on a trip or traveled somewhere and had to cook in an unfamiliar kitchen? Without opening all the cupboards, it can totally be a guessing game. Where are the utensils? Where are the pots and pans? How can I find where the pizza cutter is located? Think about a complex model you've either created or you've inherited maybe from somebody else. Did that spreadsheet have clear organization? Was it easy to understand? How long did it take for you to navigate and complete the tasks you needed to? Designing a model that anybody can understand really requires careful consideration of the model's organization and navigation, and these are the topics for our episode today. Models that have both good organization and well-built navigation enable things like greater ease of use, better clarity, time savings, especially when it comes to knowledge transfer or handing the model over to new users, and even with model expansion, when a fully built model is well designed, adding or scaling becomes a more methodical exercise. At what point do we start thinking about organization and navigation? So clearly the fundamentals of a good model already need to be in place before we focus on organizing that model for end users. And we've actually covered a lot about things like structure best practices and how to streamline formulas in order to build a solid model foundation. And you can go check out this content on the Quantrix YouTube channel. What features or modeling aspects should we have in mind when thinking about organization and navigation? Yeah, so let's tackle spreadsheets first and let's talk about organization. So I see many debates on whether a well-organized spreadsheet model means having a few sheets, but really large sets of rows or the opposite, and instead segmenting the entire model across dozens of worksheets. If you're in the second camp, of course, you probably already employ grouping worksheets together to create sections within a large spreadsheet model. And it's also common to hide unnecessary sheets or hide certain rows and columns. Freezing panes to lock a certain view of a sheet can also be helpful for users to anchor on just the most important sections of a really large worksheet. Now, navigation is really challenging to build in spreadsheets unless you want to spend some time in Visual Basic or integrate your spreadsheet with another product. So the best ways to incorporate navigation and sense of workflow into spreadsheets is often to include some of these basics. So building a table of context sheet, maybe with hyperlinks to various spots in your model, including a notes section, maybe in a separate worksheet as well. And of course, keeping a purposeful separation of the types of the data in your model. With modeling in general, but specifically in spreadsheets, it's hard to balance simplicity with the level of detail you need to provide in order for the model to function. And beyond just ordering your worksheets from left to right and using hyperlinks, there aren't many ways to actually build in instructions or workflow that aren't easily changed by a user, whether intentionally or maybe even accidentally. So going a step further, if you have a large cross-functional team who all need to contribute to various components of the same model, it's essentially impossible to customize that navigation and experience for each user without spinning up copies of broken up worksheets that someone later, of course, has to merge back together. Another challenge of building models anyone can understand is that we heavily rely on formatting and style to help make models more accessible. But the more conditional formatting, the more cell borders and colors you incorporate, they can really overload the file size and then impact performance negatively. So this can be a really difficult balance to strike, particularly when you're in spreadsheets. Moving now into the Quantrix portion of today's presentation, we're going to be looking at some of the tools and features that Quantrix has to offer. Yeah, that's right. You can see on the screen here a list of some of the things we'll show you in Quantrix that enable you to build intuitive and interactive model-driven applications for your teams and end users. 
Wouldn't it be nice if you could organize a complex model like a table of contents? We're in Quantrix and we have an organized section called the model browser that contains everything in our model grouped into various folders. Just click on any item to bring it to the front or just close the tab to refer to it later. Adding details, tips, comments, or notes across a model is a useful way to help new users understand a complicated model. In Quantrix, you can add notes anywhere. On the description of the matrix here in the model browser, directly attached to a cell, and even within formulas. Organizing a model into an appealing view can be challenging unless you're using Quantrix. Canvases are like dashboards, but much more customizable and don't require writing any code. Just drag and drop your model components onto a canvas and watch Quantrix do the rest of the work. You can also easily add customizable instructions, sliders, and even workflow. Smart buttons make it simple to guide users through an order set of tasks. Just pick which buttons you want to add to your canvas and watch Quantrix do the rest of the work. Need to reorder your steps? No problem. Just rearrange your canvases in the model browser and Quantrix will automatically update the sequence to take you to the right place. And funny enough, Lindsay, you actually created our tutorial models and our training models using these tools and techniques. Yeah, that's right. All of our tutorials and our self-guided Quantrix lessons use these exact organization and navigation features. And if you want to check them out for yourself, you can download our free trial of Quantrix today, and we'll give you the link to that uh, later in the episode. The purpose of these smart buttons and canvases is to enable modelers to create what we call model-driven applications. And these are models that present only the relevant data and details to the people who need them. And we present those in the most intuitive way, again, using essentially no code to create these applications. Do you struggle to get all the components of your complex model into a single view? Well, you can throw out all those duplicated spreadsheet windows with Quantrix. Bookmark any arrangement of matrices and canvases and save them as a perspective. You can always come right back to that view anytime you like just by using the perspectives button. This is a particularly powerful feature for teams who need to perform detailed operational planning. Do you send out copies of spreadsheets to each member of your team based on their role? Well, say no more to spreadsheet clones. In Quantrix, you can customize each person's modeling view based on their role. I'm logged in right now as the central manager, and I can see just my region's data, but now I'll go ahead and switch to a different role. Let's say, let's log in as the south manager. Quantrix enables you to filter data in the same table automatically based on who is logged into the model. In Quantrix, it's one model used by everyone where each person gets access to only the parts of the model they need. We just saw the central and south roles. So how many roles can you have in a given model? You can create as many custom roles as you like in a Quantrix model. Then you have the ability to configure very specific granular permissions for each of those roles. And then finally assign custom perspectives as we saw previously to each of those roles so that every person who logs into your model has the right access and the right view as soon as they log in. And one other comment I want to add is all these organization and navigation features we've covered, including the unlimited configurable roles and the perspectives, all of these extend to models on the web. And ultimately, this is where the majority of users actually interact with the model driven applications that are made in Quantrix. And on the screen right now, we have a QR code so that people can check out some online apps that we have on our website. We have integrated financials, a SaaS revenue tracker, real estate valuation, and a CPQ, which is configure price quote model. And all of these were designed with everything we talked about today in mind, right? Yeah, that's right. So clearly they've been taken to maybe a, a more broad application. You're going to see lots of combinations of these features playing together in these apps, but they're great examples of the potential and the possibilities of what you're able to build uh, using everything in Quantrix out of the box without any code. So very powerful and, and hopefully serve as an inspiration for um, what others can build and, and create using Quantrix. Of course, if you would like to take advantage of our free trial, we do have that for our desktop application modeler as well. So you can go to Quantrix.com slash free dash trial and you can get that there. It's fully featured so you can try out everything. Uh, and we also offer demonstrations. So if you'd like to book a demo and talk to us about how Quantrix can work for your company, we'd love to hear from you. 
So thank you again for joining us and we'll see you in the next one.